Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this beautiful high-end looking Lazy Susan on a budget. Are you ready to create something fun? Let's get started. On this channel I love to share DIYs and budget home decor and if we haven't met yet my name is Lisa and this is our gray house. I got this piece of wood from Lowe's and on their website you can see it runs about $13. The first thing I did was stain the wood circle with Waverly Wax in the color antique. It's pretty much my favorite. So my technique is to paint it on with a paintbrush or you can use a sponge brush if that's what you have and then wipe off the excess with a damp cloth. If you're looking for a lighter finish you could thin it out with some water or just be not so heavy with your initial application because you can always go back and add additional coats if you want to and it's also a good idea to go um, with the grain of the wood when applying and wiping it off because it's just going to give the finish a better look and i also stained the back and the sides now i have a cricut so i went into design space and i started a new project I added in a shape and I chose a circle because I'm using a wood round and across the top of the canvas you're going to see the word size. I clicked on the width box and added in the width. Now the circle is actually 18 inches but I only wanted my image to be 14 inches and if you're using a different shape you can click on the padlock to unlock the dimensions and you can make them whatever you need to. I did make the circle yellow so I could see my image better. I clicked add text and then I searched for the font that I wanted. For this project, I used a font called Hello Honey. And then I typed in an H and then enlarged it to fit the circle. And then this is gonna give me approximately two-ish inches on the top and the bottom of my image. Now, if you don't have a Cricut, no worries at all because you can just print out the image you want and either use graphite paper or carbon paper to trace the image onto the wood or you can use your pencil and rub the back of your image on your, on your paper and trace it on that way. You know just lots of different options that you can do so once the image is how you like it you click on the shape and you delete that and then click on the green make it button in the top right corner now it's time to load your material and because of the size of my image i loaded my material uh, my vinyl onto a 12 by 24 mat and i'm using removable vinyl that i had left over from another project because i'm using this as a stencil and I'm showing you all this part because it's where I messed up. <laughs> so I wasn't careful to keep the vinyl smooth and I ended up having to re-add the inside pieces of vinyl. It's kind of hard to explain, but the bottom left section, the inside of that loop area, is it's not where it should be. So I redid the whole process that I'm about to explain only to have to redo it. And it was probably something no one would have really like noticed or anything, but once you see it, you kind of can and see it, so I had to redo it. I sanded it down, added more stain, and I was back to square one. So I redid the stencil and this time I was more careful and what I ended up doing was keeping the vinyl backing on and placing it on the wood round and then I put a piece of painter's tape across the middle and then I'm taking off half of the backing, smoothed it down, and then I worked on the other half. The painter's tape kept the stencil where I wanted it and it helped everything, you know, keep it in place and then I removed the transfer tape and tried to just keep smoothing it. Now the first step is going to be to put Mod Podge over the stencil area and this is to help minimi minimize and hopefully prevent the paint from seeping under the stencil. I did add some painter's tape to the parts of the stencil that were close to the edge just so I wouldn't accidentally get anything onto the wood that I didn't want. And um, I'm using a sponge diver that I got from Dollar Tree. I was trying to look at what I was doing to apply the Mod Podge and I just bounce it up and down in like a typical stenciling manner just remember less is more you can always add more later now for this part i'm using waverly chalk paint in the color plaster it's a little bit warmer white and i think it goes nicely with the wood and i'm actually just painting it on but i am being careful to not push the paint under the stencil and again when in doubt less is more you can always paint another coat but to me it's harder to correct it if you want too thick so this time i didn't really go in the direction of the wood i'm just painting and i don't think it makes a difference but i'm just telling you what i did now it's time to remove the stencil and I take off the pieces of painter's tape first and then carefully remove the rest. And remember, I'm using removable vinyl and it comes up pretty easily even though I did use Mod Podge. It didn't make it stick too much or anything like that. I am using my little picker tool. I'm not sure what it's really called, but I got it from the Dollar Tree and I use it to weed my vinyl. I'm using it to remove those inner pieces on the H. Now this is really looking good. Two thumbs up from me. <laughs> so to make this a spinning Lazy Susan, you'll need this Lazy Susan swivel plate. 
plate and I got mine from Lowe's for around 10 bucks. Here's mine. And then Marvin and I couldn't figure out which side was the top or the bottom. And in the end, we just guessed. And we used the drill to attach the swivel plate to the wood. And one thing to know is that the swivel plate doesn't come with any screws or anything like that. We had some on hand, but if you don't, be sure and pick those up from the hardware store as well when you're there. And it just took a couple of minutes to attach it. And as you can see, Marvin did that part for me. It wasn't hard, but you do need to adjust the torque on that, um, the drill so you don't strip the screw. Another thing I recommend is to put something on the bottom that doesn't scratch the surfaces. So I used some felt that I got from Dollar Tree. And yeah, it works. Look at it spin. And this is how I styled it really quickly for the video. I got the pumpkins from the dollar spot at Target. I don't remember where I got my hopnail vase from, but that's a vintage napkin holder and of course salt and pepper shakers. And um, I had that little sign. So this was just a little quick styling set just to kind of give you an idea of what you could do with it. I'm going to keep mine on my island, but you could also put this in the middle of your table. Um, just, you know, I think it just looks super cute. Y'all. This turned out amazing. It's beautiful, it's high-end looking, and it was on a budget. Now, if you create one of these for yourself, please be sure and tag me wherever you're posting it, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, wherever. I wanna see what you made and so I can celebrate it with you. And don't forget, if you wanna follow me on any of the social media, like here on YouTube or over on Instagram or TikTok or something like that, it's Our Gray House, but just don't follow me in real life though because that's creepy. Bye.